Welcome back. And we are now delighted to have here with us uh, David Sugarman, an American uh, living here in Israel who moved 11 years ago, here to talk about a very profound spiritual and mystical experience yes. having to do with the number 22 as we're filming the show on 22222, even though it's not 22222 when it's airing, but it's important. We're filming it today, so we're setting the intention. Right. Please explain how this connection to this number came about for you. Uh, I got to start with, first of all, it is 222, like you said, today and the year 2022. And the significance behind that number is in, it's from the Kabbalah, or you can talk uh, numeral Hebrew numerology with um, the, the numerical value behind 222 uh, is Bet, Resh, and Kaf, and this means Barech. So when we look at that word, barech, it means blessed. Mm -hmm. So already I'm starting off this conversation as a blessed conversation and a blessed year to come after everything that we've gone through in the you last sure two have. years. You sure have, yeah. So there's another two there as well, you know? Exactly. Um, but it was my father's favorite number, and um, he was a practicing rabbi in the United States. And he actually had it on his license plate, the number 222. Uh, it was Rav 222. Mm -hmm. And what happened was he was diagnosed with cancer, esophagus cancer, nine months ago. And I had gone three times to see him. And the third time was the last time, which I did not know. But prior to that, I had signs. Wow. Yeah. I, I, first of all, I mean, I'm so sorry about your yes. father, and I know it's such a huge loss. Uh, I imagine, in a way, the numbers are yes. giving you some kind of solace, even yes. even if it was, I'm sure, strange when you went through it. Explain, yes. you know, what happened. You knew. So my mother and my father, they both love Jerusalem. They love this place, as you can see behind you and behind me. And... Um, it was October 14th, 2021. I decided to drive to Jerusalem with, with my wife and to go and bring this Sidor and this Kippah there to go pray and touch it. I believe in touching as well. My father did that a lot with rocks and stones and there's like an energy to it. Mm -hmm. So I prayed, I called up my father and it was like a blessing for him again that he felt the wall for the very last time because he actually wanted to die in Israel and Jerusalem was his home but he just never did it and I fulfilled his dream later on. Wow. Um, so I drive back to Rehovah where I live. The next day I do a couple things, you know, um, I train, that's what I do. Uh, I teach business English and I was at a company and I did a couple things but right before Shabbat's coming in on Kabbalah Shabbat I see the first sign and it's in the gas tank, the kilometers that you have, and it said 222. And this is right before I'm gonna to fly to my dad. This is the last time I'm gonna drive my car. So you can see, I thought about it because it was on my father's car the whole time. And that video was seven seconds long. I did not know that the seven would be a sign later on, but he died seven days later from that video when it was taken. Wow, and he died at 2.22 in yes. the morning as well. Yes, it was on a Shabbat. My father, when he was like 18 or 19, he met Rabbi Shlomo Karabach. Mm. Uh, my grandmother introduced him to him, and uh, Rabbi Shlomo Karabach brought my father back into the religion. And on the day, on Friday the 22nd, I call up a rabbi here in Israel who was really close with me because he was there for my wife's mother when she died. Mm -hmm. And I call him, and I'm like, Rabbi, can you give me a blessing for my dad? And he knows my story. He knows that I even did a small conversion here as well. I have all of these things. And he says to me, David, do you know, you, you know your father played with Rabbi Shlomo Karabach. Um, today is Rabbi Shlomo Karabach's your site, Heshvan Sheshisrei. If you wow. look it up on Google right now, it will say October 22nd, wow. 2021. Yeah, that's, so that was a parallel, and it was another confirmation. 
that wow, my father was that going. he's in good company. Yeah, he, he was going he, to pass. He, I guess he could just give you solace to think your, your dad's rocking out with uh, Shlomo Carl back up, <laughs> yeah. up in, the, uh, in the upper realms right now. Exactly, I hope so, I, <laughs> and, I, I, and I know it. So um, there were just like a lot of different things that came to me on that Friday. Um, my father had two tours in the house. Um, one of them's not like a kosher Torah. What does that mean? Uh, basically, it was made by many different scribes, and then there were a couple mistakes, and there's like a lot of superstitions about mezuzahs and how they can like, I don't know, do harm to you in your house. So to have someone check them is a good thing. Yeah. And I asked my father about it, and he said, you know, they're all okay, they're okay. But I said, what about the Torah? This was like seven months ago. He said to me, I can't do anything with it. No one's going to buy it right now, you know, and I'm too sick to, to do anything with it. So I took that Torah out of the house. It was like 8 p.m., and I put it into the Rav 222. I put it into the car. I take the kosher Torah. The, what does kosher mean? It's done by one scribe and cost a lot of money to get that done. Right. And I put that Torah next to my father, and I take his talit, one of his talits, and I put it on him. And I say to him, good night, because I knew that he was wow. going to die. Uh, I just felt wow. it. And I go to bed, you know, it's like 9 p.m. I say good, good night to my mom. I say good night to my dad. And my uncle was there, and my sister was there. I go to sleep on Saturday morning at 2.15. My mom wakes me, up, wakes me up and she says, your father's not breathing well. So immediately I get up and I bring the sea door that I brought with me to Jerusalem that I touched the wall with. I open it up to the Shema and I start saying the Shema all the way down to the end. Um, first of all, that's in the mezuzah and it's the most important prayer for Jews. You know, you can say it two or three times a day. It's very good. But that prayer I knew was really important because um, when, my, when my wife's mother died on June 22nd, years ago, she called all of us in as a family. And I was considered like a son to her because I made Aliyah and I didn't have family here. So she says, repeat these words after me. And we did. And two hours later, she dies. Wow. So she kind of knew or, or someone knew or something new right. that she was going to pass. Wow. So here I am doing the Shema, right, for my father. My mother goes to my sister, wakes her up, and my uncle swears by it that he heard a book fall on the ground, and it woke him up, and then he came over. So now we have me, my mom, my sister, my uncle, and the Torah, my dad there. And I'm looking at the time, and it's exactly two 22, the same number that I saw seven days prior, you know, 222, and you could make another connection that me and my uncle were like two, yep. my sister and my mom were two, and the Torah, and like my father were two. So that's, it was a blessed death. I mean, I put my ear on his chest and I listened for a heartbeat, no. So his soul had left and went to the other world, or maybe it was still there. I don't know at that point, but I have to say that like everything was set, and I had so many other signs. This is just things about numbers. This is the one that I mean, listen, um, it's all connected. Exactly, you know. Thank you so much yeah, for coming course. and sharing yes. this journey. Really, I'm so happy about thank that. Thank you, thank you, and keep up the good work, bringing brachot to the whole world. Emily, thank you.